In this episode of Dirt Race Life, we are going to figure out what to cut the spacers to in order to correctly set the bump on our crate racing street stock. But the first thing we've got to do in order to be able to measure that is build a bump steer gauge. All right, let's get busy. All right, on the building part, let's talk about the pieces it's going to take for us to put together a bump steer gauge. There are two bolt pieces that you have to have, and that is uh, digital or dial indicators. And what I've got here is some zero to one inch digital indicators. These will do both metric and imperial. And of course, we'll set them zero to one inch imperial. Um, and we need to make sure that they have got a holder on the back. Most all of them are gonna have a mounting bracket like this on the back of them. There's a few rare instances of ones that aren't made like this. We really need to be able to put a quarter inch bolt through this. You'll see that when we start building it. Um, but I got these on Amazon. They did come with a certi certification and everything. And I think they were around $20 a piece. I'll put a link to them on my website. So just check us out at dirtracelife.com. Of course, we've got swag there too. But uh, I'll put a link to these where you can see um, what I bought in this case. So two identical gauges. I do think it's important that it's a match set because um, you do have to have two of them. And then you've got the gauges. And then I have got the critical piece for this is you have to have got a, a flat plate of some kind that is going to mount onto your hub. And so this is 3 16 plate steel that I've got. I've had a lot of 3 16 plate steel that I've used in this build. And I've checked and made sure that this is perfectly flat, sanded it off and everything. It can't, it can be aluminum. Um, it could be, I've seen some guys use like MDF board to do this. The main thing is, is it has to be flat. It can't have gouges or grooves. It can't have any cup or anything going on, any twist, because that will directly throw the readings off anything like that going on. So make sure it's flat, whatever you come up with. Now, as far as the width goes, if you bought a store-bought bump steer gauge, most of them are 20 to 22 inches. This stock that I've got is 16 inches, and that's fine. I measure at the, at the um, steering arm, however far that arm is out from the center, that's where my measurement is. So if I say that I've got 10 thousandths of bump out or something like that, it's whatever is out where the tie rod is connecting on um, to, the, to the spindle arm. That's where I'm measuring at. Well, like for the spindles that I've got, they're about seven inches is what they are, which will be 14 inches um, across here, front and back. The further out you go, the more accurate your measurement is gonna be, so keep that in mind. And so if you've got a 20 or 22 inch piece or you're buying a piece of plate steel or something, go a little bit further, get on out there to 24 inches, it is gonna get more accurate as you go. Just keep in mind, if you're comparing people's numbers, this will all makes sense as we go through this video, but as you're comparing your number to someone else's number, how far out you are um, from the center is changing that number's meaning. Um, and so that's why I always reference measuring at wherever that tie rod end is connecting on, that being my distance out, that's my standard. Um, so just keep that in mind. So even if you're measuring way out and you want to compare it to like what I'm doing, you can see what your measurement was there. Um, you can move around. All right, with that said, this plate right here, we're gonna drill it where a hub can bolt on in the middle. This plate right here is a heavy piece that is just for the floor for it to sit and be secure. It can be anything um, that's just heavy and flat, something that, you know, like your whole, Tie, you know, your bump steer assembly is going to sit down on the concrete for you to be able to measure and you don't want it to move around or something. It could be lighter and you take a piece of lead or something heavy and sit on top of it. You just don't want it to move. All right. I've got three square tubes that are 14 inches a piece. Okay. This is a little, this is like, uh, see, this is half inch and this one is three quarter, I think. And two of these will slide together. That's on purpose. I think that's one inch one inch and some half inch square tube. And then another one right here. All right, this is gonna make sense in just a second because what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount one like a T. We're gonna put a pinch bolt on it 
where that we've got a height adjustment. We're gonna mount the second one, so that one's gonna be go up and down in it with a pinch bolt mounted to it. And we're going to have this T welded on like that right there. And then we're gonna turn around and we are going to bolt these two dial indicators to the end of it. And that, my friend, is going to be a bump steer gauge. Done. And a lot less expensive than some of them out there for sale. All right, with that said, let's get this thing built. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill our plate where that we can bolt it on. And I've got one of these, I bought this thing years ago, maybe I gave like $5 for it from Speedway. And it's got all the different bolt patterns on it. It's the handiest little piece of plastic. I've been using this thing for years. But what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna find the center right quick. And I'm just gonna throw, it does not have to be, um, believe it or not, when you're doing this, this does not have to be perfectly accurate. Uh, you're going to get really good measurements without having precision machining on this stuff. So don't, don't panic. Don't overthink this. You could have these holes off. This thing could not be in the center perfectly, and it won't matter. What matters is that this plate is flat. That's what matters. Everything else is negotiable. All right. So... Got our holes there. Oh, I forgot. Got a center hole too. We're gonna do. Now I'm on. And matter of fact, you will talk about rough. Of course, we don't have a machine shop, but I'm actually gonna torch this center out. I don't have a. I do not have a hole saw that big, and I'm not worried about it. But I'm gonna torch that center out. Now the one thing I say about torching that out is, is that if I put a ton of heat into it, that would be a problem because it could cause deflection or something. So I am keeping that in mind. But, center punch these things right quick. And I'm gonna over drill these holes. So like I've got five eight studs in, but I'll take this up to like uh, 11 sixteenths or three quarters. Um, I'm not worried about it. I want it to just have plenty of room for me to be able to easily put it on and off because all I'm doing is getting it flat. That's the purpose. Um, not, you know, it's not going to be spinning on the car or anything like that. So um, don't, uh, don't put yourself through a lot of grief for something that's not going to matter. Next up, let's cut that center out. All right, so now that we've got our plate out of the way, we got a little bit more drilling to do. We have got two quarter 20 threaded rod couplers. And these are gonna go in the end of one of our half by half tubes. We're actually gonna drive these in, but we're gonna drill a hole in each end. That's gonna be a hole that we can put a weld mark in where that we can fix these in place. Um, and then while we're drilling, we're gonna go ahead and drill for us to mount our pinch bolt onto our big one inch tube as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I am just gonna take, put a hole a half inch back on each end of this one. So mark there, and a mark there. And then I'm gonna put that pinch bolt, I think I'll put it one inch down from one end. I don't think it really matters which end. And we're gonna put these holes. Now this one's gonna be big enough for this 3 8 I got a fine thread 3 8 bolt right here with a fine thread nut. We're gonna weld the nut down. All right, so I'm gonna do a 3 8 hole on that one. Okay, now we're gonna 
gonna take our little quarter 23 rod couplers and we are going to set them with the two flats lined up and even and the angles. And we are gonna drive them in without smashing our fingers. Alright, so I drove that down flush. Realistically, it's probably never going to move, but I've got that hole right there so we can put a little spot weld so it will never move. Alright, so there's that one. And here's this one. Alright, so you can see how I drove that in and the two lines, two flats just fit perfectly and then it'll just push a little bit on these two edges. They fit really good and tight. Really like how these work. If you're thinking about this and you're trying to make, say, some stands uh, for mounting the body on the car where that you want to have something welded onto your frame and then your body mounts to it, think about it. You can just drive that quarter 20 thread rod insert right into a piece of half by half tubing right there and it just works perfectly. But one thing I found is, is drill the hole where you can put a little weld mark in it, that way it doesn't pull it out. Um, Cause it's tight, but I mean, it would pull it out over time. Those locked in permanently. Let's see. My pinch bolt in here. This does not have to be perfect, y'all. Don't fret over this if it doesn't look beautiful. It works just fine, even if it's ugly. your gauge is it I'm telling you here's this here's that got your pinch bowl right here where you set your height yep there it is all right so like yep so you set your height there it is and then the only other thing to do is, let me get my gloves off. Hang on. Then the dial indicators themselves. Go right. So I got a little quarter 28 bolt right, or a quarter 20 bolt right there going on the thread rod. And then that just goes on there. Just like that. One goes there, and the other one, the bolt. All 
Okay. Other one goes here. All right, so we've got our $40 plus scrap bump steer gauge here done. The only other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these back off. I'm gonna paint this up. That way it's permanent because I'm gonna use this thing from now on. We're gonna start out into the car where we can get a frame of reference on bump steer and then we're gonna to go to the dry erase board for a few more details. But starting under the car here, let's talk about what bump steer is. This lower control arm right here, think of it as like a hinge, okay? Your two bushings on the back, this lower control arm is hinging down and up. And it's got the spindle connected on the end of it. This inner and outer tie rod right here, think of that the same way. It's on, it's on a fulcrum point right here, so it's hinged onto my center link, and it's connected out here on the end to my spindle, all right? As this lower control arm is going up and down, up and down, this inner and outer tie rod in right here also is having to go up and down. The difference between these two connection points where that this lower control arm bushing is and where this inner tie rod in, that difference right there compared to the difference between the lower ball joint and this outer tie rod in, in my case, this hind joint right here, the difference in them in distance and length, total length of that, and angle between the two, that is creating a difference in where this end of this outer tie rod ends up at according to where it's at in that arc of up or down. And we call it bump steer because as this bumps up, then that difference causes, this is on a different arc, if it's a different length or at a different angle, it will cause steer when this gets bumped. Is, and that's what bump steer is. In a nutshell, that's all it is. And the way that we fix it is by changing this distance. Okay, so two ways we could change this distance. If we had a different center link, you would be changing the end point of where this inner tie rod end, end, end is at. And if we had a different spindle on, we could be changing this outer tie rod end location as well. Okay, so you can change length to match up. That's the reason that when you change lower control arms, it'll mess your bump up just by doing that. All right, and then the big one is angle. All right, so if you raise or lower either end of this, that angle, then that means as this goes up and down through its cycle, it's turning in and out at a different rate by how much that you're bumping it up or down. All right, so that's bump steer. Now we're gonna go to the dry erase board, and what I want you to remember is we're gonna draw some lines, and these lines are gonna represent this lower control arm from the ball joint back to the bushings, and this tie rod assembly from this joint to this joint, all right? So keep that in mind. Now let's get on the board and talk about fixing it. Here we go. We're not gonna draw this to scale, but we're gonna draw it in a way hopefully that'll make sense. I'm going to put a lower control arm just as a line. This is the bushing right here. That's the bushing that the lower control arm bolts to the frame. Right here, this triangle, that's the ball joint where the spindle is connected on, okay? Now, we're gonna turn around and we're gonna say, here is where the inner tie rod end is connected onto the center link right there. And let's just theorize a, a great setup here where that this is the, um, the joint, the hind joint right there, where it's connected on to the spindle arm, okay? And so we've got this inner and outer tie rod end right here, and we've got this lower control arm right there, all right, just like we saw on the car a while ago. Now, if the distance from joint, center of joint to center of joint there, and center of joint to center of joint for the inner and outer tie rod end, if those two distances are the same, and the angle, okay, so the angle, I'll just do this, between these two, if they're parallel to each other, or very close to parallel to each other, in that scenario, you're gonna have very good bump steer numbers. 
That's going to get about as close as you're going to be able to get when you set up like this. And you can see this on the car. It's difficult to measure it just like measuring it like this. But when you're designing and putting it all together, you're working towards this. And then, you know, you use a bump steer gauge to get down to the fine detail of it. So the question is, well, why? Why do these angles have to be the same? Why do these distances have to be the same? Well, let me show you why, all right? This lower control arm is, when it goes up and down, it is rotating on the radius around the bushing. And so I'm just gonna rough that in. That looks like this right here, okay? That green line right there that I drew, all right? So that's your lower control arm going up and down. It's taking the spindle along for the ride, all right? That center link is doing the same thing. It is rotating up and, oh, see, I said center link. That inner and outer tie rod end assembly is rotating in and up and down on the center link point the same way. It's going along for the ride because it's connected onto the spindle, all right? And so it has a radius, all right? So if these two are parallel to each other, and the distances between the center points of each is the same amount, then what happens is you get two radius arcs that parallel each other through the arc. So as the lower control arm is going up and down, that's the wheel you know, getting compressed or extended, as that is happening, then the spindle is traveling with it and this tie rod end, it is on a path that can be different from where this ball joint is, but as long as they're aligned as far as the lengths of them and parallel, it will be the same. And so what this looks like in, in the real world is when this lower control arm bumps up by an inch, then this center link is also bumping up by the same amount and the distance here, when it was you know, at zero, is the same as the distance here when it was bumped up an inch. What am I talking about on distance here? That's where that, that spindle arm, okay, and you've got your outer tie rod end connected onto that steering arm. And so as it's going up and down, if these two distances stay the same, they're going up and down together, and it's not pushing that arm in or out. But if they deviate from each other, if that distance changes, then as it goes up or down, then that arm is getting pushed in or out. What causes that? Well, let me show you the two basic ways, all right? Let's imagine, so we're gonna just take and clean the board up here a little bit. We're gonna leave our lower control arm we're going to take our, our uh, inner and outer tie rod end here off, okay? We're going to redraw it. Let's imagine that it looks like this. Let's imagine that the distances are the same, but the angles are different. Of course, I'm exaggerating here. You probably wouldn't see it be this much on the car, but all right. So there we are. Let's, let's imagine that the distance is the same between the two, but the angle is different. What does that do as far as how it affects bump? Well, the radius is still the same radius, but the arc that the radius is taking is now different because this is the center of the radius and it's going like this now. Okay, and so look at that. Now these two arcs, go away from each other as the lower control arm goes up, go towards each other as it goes down. And look, they even cross over each other. If you go down far enough, they cross over each other. And so on the car, real world, what, is, what does that look like? Okay, so imagine, let's say we set the car exactly like we want. We've got a toe out and everything like that, and you're at zero, okay? You've got it set at zero. All right, as we compress, the spindle and that arm, you know, it's connected onto that inner tie rod end. As it goes up, this inner tie rod end, it's on this arc that's pulling back toward the frame, right? 
that, that center is pulling back toward the frame more. So as it goes up, it's pulling that steering arm in. So it's, it, it's towing in that wheel as it goes up. Well, what happens when it goes down? Well, when it goes down, look, it goes down. It's pushing out, pushing out, pushing out. It's towing that wheel out, all right? But after, after it goes so far, now look, it's going to go from towing out. Now it's going to start pulling it back in again. So you can literally have bump steer where it's moving it out and then back in as it works through two different arcs. So it can really be difficult to diagnose it when you're measuring and you're seeing these measurements happen um, if you don't kind of understand what's going on on the board um, as a part of it. Now that's just angle doing that. Let's talk about what happens if they're two different lengths. So everybody is swapping out lower control arms and you know putting on novas in place of metrics and all kind of stuff. But are they taking into account this? Like, which center link are you using? That's where we really get into this, y'all, is when you start talking about which center link, which interconnection with tie rod end points. So let's just say, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to say the angle is the same, but now the distance is different, okay? So now let's say that the inner and outer tie rod length assembly is shorter than what the lower control arm is, okay? What does that look like? Well, the radius on the two, if they're parallel to each other, it's the same arc line, but it's a smaller arc. It's a smaller radius. So now this arc is smaller. And what does that look like in the real world? Well, it can be really insidious. It can be difficult to diagnose um, when this is going on. You may have this, and the question is how much but when you're like at zero, so like it's connected on at zero, well, as these two arcs are, you know, real close, you know, parallel to each other, they're real close to each other, maybe that first inch of compression or that first inch of extension, your bump doesn't seem that bad. You know, maybe you've only got 20 or 30 thousandths of bump, you know, so like as this goes up, the two go apart from each other, but not that much, you know, not that much in each direction. But then that second inch, well, that second inch, they're starting to deviate away from each other further, all right? And so maybe you've only got 20 or 30 thousandths bump when you go one inch, but you've got 70, 80, or 100 thousand when you get to the second inch. And then the third inch, it's just out to lunch. Um, and that's what difference in angle can do. Now imagine, I'm not going to redraw it again, but you had difference in length and difference in angle both. Okay, so you just can be all over the place, all right? You can just be all over the place. Um, but what you're striving for here is, you know, parallel to each other and same distance to each other. You can't perfectly achieve that, um, but what you have to do is, is you have to try to get close. And I'll say you won't perfectly uh, achieve it. You know, maybe you've got, maybe you've got, um, a slight difference in length, you know, so, uh, how do I put this? And when we go to working on this, you know, we look at like this standpoint, perhaps you're a half inch difference in length right here. All right. And this is where you get into, you know, comp uh, correcting buck steer. But imagine you've got a half inch difference in length, all right? And so you've got, you know, it's, it's close. Let's just say it's close. And it turns away just a little bit at the top. Just a little bit at the top. And this is on the right front. And let's say in the right front, all we really care about is compression on the right front. We're not gonna be extending the right front driving the car. We're gonna be compressing the right front. Well. It may be that we intentionally choose to lower this connection point because we've got a slight difference in length right here. We, we choose to intentionally lower this connection point out here where it connects to the spindle. And the reason that we choose to do that is because what we're doing is, is that arc is slightly different 
But what we're doing is we're correcting it to be very similar in how it acts through its range of motion. So maybe it's smaller, and maybe if you extended it now, because we lowered it, if you were to extend that right front, it would get much worse in extension because of it. It would become a much bigger gap because we changed the angle on purpose. But by doing that, we've corrected it for where we're trying to drive the car. And so it's important to understand the theory of the bump steer as far as like how to fix it and everything. But on the car, it is somewhat trial and error. You know, we may take and start adjusting on this um, in order to get close, you know, and then measure to see what's happening here. Well, what happens if I go up? Am I going the right direction or the wrong direction? What happens if I go down? Am I going the right direction or the wrong direction? Because it can be very difficult to measure that minute difference. Now, big changes um, as far as like, for example, you've changed which lower control arm that you've got on the car. You know, yeah, you need to take and have the lower control arm on the car and then have the spindle on it and look and see, you know, where's that arm on the spindle? And then, okay, where's my connection point, you know, on my center link? Do I need to change to a different center link and, you know, run through the book or like go to my website, uh, dirtracelife.com and, you know, I've got like a, uh, a table that I've put all the different center link options in with the widths and location, the, the connection points for all of them. You know, maybe you need to go through there and figure out, okay, which one of the center links would I want in order to get these two as close as I can. You do have to do a little bit of legwork like that on the front end, and I did it on my car in the design phase, you know, but then on the car, it's just a matter of measuring, and then you're going to make adjustments basically just to this angle, um, and keep in mind the easiest angles uh, way to change angle is out here at the spindle on this end, but you can change it at the center length by bending that pitman arm on your sector. You know, you could bend that up and down, and idler arms you can get that are adjustable, where that you can adjust the whole center length up and down on the car, because it's just, effect, just as effective to change it on this end as it is on this end. And if you'll think about that, you know, if you're right up against you know, where your steering arm, where you're connected on, maybe you don't have any more adjustment. Maybe you have to adjust on this end. We'll look at my car here when we're doing it and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, let's fix our car. All right, so here we are on the car. Here's our plate. I painted everything with lacquer. It's good and dry. Um, I use a spacer just so that my hub in the middle doesn't get in the way. That works really good anyway. So I'm gonna take, put that right there. It doesn't have to really be tight or anything. I just throw a couple of nuts on here just so that it doesn't wiggle. That's the main thing. This plate, like, like I said, you make this out of aluminum, you can make it out of steel. I've even seen it made out of MDF board before, but it has to be flat. Flat, 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 flat. Can't have any warp bow crook, nothing in it. You have to know it's going to be flat. And this one is. All right, so there that is. I've set, now this is up on my lift. Um, but I've set my right, I've set it close to where level for ride height should be, is where it is. This is the left front, we're going to do this side. I've already set this, I've been playing around with it, and I've already set this to my final, um, distance right here, which is a spacer that's only, uh, like a quarter inch spacer in there is all that's in there. And what I was doing was, is I was trying to get that level, um, versus distance to that best optimum to get my bump space, uh, my bump steer where I wanted it. And you say, well, where did I want my bump steer? Um, I would rather have both front wheels bump out in compression and in an extension um, than to have one that bumped out and one that bumped in. So when I say out and in, so like, when this car compresses and both the left front and the right front are both coming up, um, I would rather have it so that both front wheels just literally tow out some more. And you say, well, how much? Well, ideal would be that when I'm at ride height, bumping or extending that first inch, you know, you're looking for 10 to 20 thousandths max. Um, you know, second inch, third inch, um, you know, if you're at 20 to 30 thousandths, to, in my opinion, that's okay. 
Um, but you don't want, like, it would be a problem if, if I'm zero on one of them and on the, you know, say from zero to one inch a bump, I, you know, it's zero. It's not towing in or out any at all. And the other one, I'm gaining 30, in, uh, 30 thousandths of an inch on that first inch of compression. Maybe you might feel that. Maybe that might be an input going in uh, to your steering when the car compresses over. Um, so I like for both of them to do the same thing. I like for it, you know, I'd rather when the car sits down, um, if I'm going to have any movement at all, like both bump out and I gain like a 32nd of an inch of, of toe out or something to that effect. Um, in my opinion, when you get beyond about 30 thousandths of an inch per inch of bump, you know, right in that level zone, then that's too much. You need to work on it. And I got this one in, I think, a pretty good spot. So I got our plate on here, all right? And we've got our T-stand. I put, got me some nice rubber foam stuck to the bottom where it'll sit on the floor, won't wiggle around. It's on a T-stand. Mounted our digital indicators on it. And all I did is I set my T-stand height here. And I'm just, I set it in the middle, so right in there, like that, all right? And all I'm going to do is just pull these up. These are zero to one digital indicators. So I'm just pulling it up in the middle of them is all I'm doing. That way as it goes up and down, they stay in range. And you see, I just literally set it there. That's all you got to do. All right. And you're zero and zero. All right. And they're going to move just a little bit. It's okay. All right. Make sure my plate is level. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to set it to close to zero. All right, so that's level. And I took some vice grips. I squared my front end. So I drew an X, I measured an X across between my idler arm and my sector. I made sure that, that my sector, it's pointing straight forward um, for the steering. And then I took vice grips and I locked my steering shaft where that, that's not wiggling or moving. That way it's all just this bump steer movement happening. I don't want my steering sector to be moving any at all during this. All right, so now, Zero those. All right, so there's zero. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go, and what I found was, and here's how I do it. So like the top of this plate sitting at 21 inches. I'm gonna bump up an inch. So I'm gonna go, well, it's 21 and a half, so I'm gonna go to 22 and a half. All right, and so I had zero both of these. Well, as this goes up, it's rolling back because it's on an arc. So now it went to minus 95 thousandths and minus 88 thousandths. So it got seven thousandths of toe out. And it's got seven thousandths of toe out when it went in one inch of compression there. That's really, really good. I'm very happy with that. Um, and so you see this plate, this, it, this dial indicator is right in line with where my steering arm is. That's why I do them that way. Let's see what that second inch is. Now I already know that the lengths of these parts are not exactly the same from the factory, but it's a pretty good setup on this 73, 77 frame. So I'm gonna go to 23 and a half. So that's two inches. All right, let's see where we're at. All right, so I am at minus 207 thousandths and minus 203 thousandths. So I got five thousandths of an inch um total now so it's just practically not moving as it goes through that arc and what that's indicating is is that at level those parts are right in the center of their radiuses in alignment to each other but it's not perfect let me show you extension and i'll show you what i'm talking about because i know that the left front is going to compress when i enter the turn my critical steering moment it will be compressed and this bump is great for that but as I go through the center of the turn and I'm transitioning off, I may get some extension on the left front. I don't really want much. I want to keep this car planted. Don't get me wrong. But I expect that I could possibly have an inch of extension going on here. So let's go back. Set this back to 21 and a half. That's where it was. All right. All right. So we set it back to 21 and a half. I'm going to re-zero it. And let's drop it to 
20 and a half. Right there. Alright. There we go. Okay, so that's a dropped an inch of extension. And in an inch of extension, I got 50,000. And 71, so I got 21 thousandths in an inch of extension. So let's look at this overall. When I compressed up, it bumped out seven thousandths of an inch and then you know transitioned back to being only five thousandths of an inch. So practically nothing on bump out um, during compression. And then turn around and when I extended an inch, it bumped out um, by 21 thousandths. And so that tells me that my two radiuses right here, they're right on top of each other. And there's a little bit of overlap going on between the two. The angles are probably not exactly the same. The lengths are probably a little different from each other. But this is where it gets into, it's a little bit fuzzy. You can't get it exactly perfect, but I've played around with it. This is about as close as I can get right here. And it's right on it. And if I go further, like I zeroed it out and just did not have a spacer at all, and I started going back the wrong way again. Um, you know, and that's what you got to do. You know, like I use, and what I do is I just use these simple little grade two um, lock washers. And so what I'll do is, is I take the full long bolt and I start stacking lock washers up and I start running through the arcs and seeing where I can get with it, you know, working through. So I started out with it all the way long and then I, I took and I took half of them out and I did it again. I said, okay, it's going in the right direction. Let me take some more out. And then I got all the way down to just one or two and I got to this good spot. And then when I took them all out, I started going back the wrong way again. And I was like, okay, I know what I need. And so then I made me a spacer that was a quarter inch spacer to go in there boom right on the money that is a good indication too of just how accurate this front end is on this 73 to 77 frame because that's very similar to what a stock tie rod end would be um and that's why camaros are, have really good front ends because they've got a front end that's very similar to this where they're really close from the factory um and just a little bit of tuning adjustment you can get them perfect and uh, this car is gonna be the same way. That's a stock center link. I had to make a little bit of correction on the other arm location for this. And I think that's just where the frame had had damage or something um, to correct the center link location whenever I was setting up all the caster and camber and everything. I saw it needed to fix there. I think it paid off dividends. This seems to be perfect. So this is how it's done on the right side. When I do it, I am only looking at compression because driving the car at speed on the track, we're gonna be running um, a tie down shock on it and the car is gonna stay compressed the whole time on the right front. Like I said, might get a little bit of extension going on on this left front. I know I'm not gonna get any extension going on the right front. So I'm gonna focus on that side on just getting it to have as little bump out. Um, if it had bump in, I would get rid of that. Um, but yeah, ideally I'm going to get that same between zero and, you know, 10 to 20 thousandths at most, um, bump out on that right front. And we are going to run this bad boy. All right. So that's bump steer. There it is. Um, and like I said, the two digital indicators, I'm thinking they were around $20 a piece and they came with certification papers and everything. Um, I'll put a link to these on our website, dirtracelife.com. Hey, check our website out. We've got some swags and t-shirts and some joggers, hoodies, stuff like that on there as well. Helps support the channel for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, I use scrap material. You know, if you bought the material, um, you easily could go, you know, 70, 80, a hundred dollars on one of these. And so, and then you look at your time. So you can get a nice bumps to your unit, uh, for maybe 250, 275 dollars. So you just have to make a judgment call there. But I wanted to show this, I wanted to show doing it the absolute uh, least expensive way because in my opinion, having a tool like this right here, doing this level of setup work on your street stock is the difference between truly amateur, you know, and someone who is seriously doing the work in their shop you know, to be that professional driver on the track with a great driving car, this is one of the pieces that you need to have. And, you know, like I said, even on a really tight budget, 
um, and that's really important right now. You know, you can build one of these units yourself for, I think, very reasonable amount of money and everything. Makes a huge difference on how the car drives. Hey, I hope y'all like this video right here. This was an important one for me to get done to try to help our community and help our racers. If you agree with what we're doing right here, check out our join links for DRL as a team sponsor. Makes a huge difference um, with what we're doing here, making this video content. We have got over 20 different sponsors now that's really putting us in a good position to be able to travel across the southeastern u.s this year and do some racing with this car if i could just get it done and uh and i've got i don't know if you noticed that shock mounted right there i've got shocks going on the car now and that's on a separate video we're going to show everything about exactly what shock check shock package that we're doing so if you're not uh, if you're not subscribed to us subscribe because it is great 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 i am so excited about this i really appreciate y'all looking forward to that next video